Welcome to The Kingdom View. I am your host, Luann Toposki. Thanks for joining us. Come on, let's see what God has for us today. Hi everyone, thanks again for joining us at The Kingdom View. We have a wonderful show for you today and we're gonna be talking to some global warrior women. We're gonna be talking about faith and finances and how to thrive in uncertain times. We have Madrika Wilson uh, with us today. She is a dynamic speaker, teacher, entrepreneur, and minister. She is the co-founder of Go Traders Academy, a faith-based community of Forex traders. Madrika is a certified foreign exchange analyst with six years of experience teaching students globally and principles of trading combined with the kingdom principles of wealth creation. That's powerful. So that basically people can help, they can help fund their divine assignments. She resides in Nassau, Bahamas with her husband, Trevor. We also have Tina Benoit. She is the CFO of Faith Ventures Inc., a 501c3 discipleship training ministry, the executive director of Faith Ventures Ministries, and the discipleship mass, uh, pastor in Clarksville, Georgia. She is a lover of all things Jesus, a crazy faith water walker, a life application teacher, a coach's coach, a mentor, an international conference speaker, and an all-around handy ma'am. And uh, that's pretty powerful because I am not a handy ma'am at all. We also have Libby George, and she's from New Zealand, and she is a prophetic seer and wellness breakthrough coach from New Zealand. For the past 25 years, Libby has helped thousands of her clients walk away from chronic disease and heal from inner wounds. Her mandate is to equip and empower women to be ready for all God has for them in their highest calling. She has an online wholeness program called Keto for Christians. This program helps individuals to be well and reset their, their health so they can advance into their giftings, thereby passionately fulfilling their spiritual purpose and calling so they can be ready. We also have Karen Stalley with us, and she is the Back to Life Coach at Cal Karen Stalley Coaching. Karen is an author, speaker, presenter, and coach uh, for Kingdom Builders Academy. She has over 20 years experience as a workshop facilitator in Europe and in the United States as well as Africa and Asia. Karen is anointed to speak life over dry bones, infuse hope, and uncover identity. She is called to resuscitate, inspire, and mobilize the warrior bride. We have a power-packed, power-packed show for you today. Please welcome my guests, all of my guests, Madriga, Tina, Libby, and Karen amazing women. Madrika, would you start us out today and just share with us a little bit about finances and faith? Certainly, Luann. I want to thank you so much for having me on The View today. Uh, it's such an awesome time to be a believer uh, in the household of faith at this time with so much going on in the world. Some of it is good. Some of it is not so good. Uh, there's so many things going on that could cause a lot of people to get in a very, very fearful place. And I believe that now more than ever, believers must rise up in their faith. Amen. You know, my husband and I, we got started in itinerant ministry about 12 years ago. And I can tell you, it was a very fearful time. A lot of times God would send us to different countries to preach or to speak and he often would send us without money. And it was scary having to trust God um, every single month for every single assignment. We really, really learned how to extend our faith. We learned to believe God for every single provision. We learned to lean on God, particularly in the area of our finances, because at that time we were not only doing ministry, but also operating as entrepreneurs at the same time. And once again, 
we had to learn how to apply our faith. And I can tell you, it was a beautiful journey. We learned to put those scriptures that we read about in the Bible. We learned how to declare the word of God um, over our bodies, over our business. We began to speak. And even when things didn't look so good, it, it came to a place where we taught ourselves to make a daily decision to speak the word of God, whether it was about our health, whether it was about business, whether it was about, you know, just things that we saw going on in our communities in our, and in our country that was contrary to the word of God. We just rose up and we continue to do so. And Luann, I can tell you, I've seen the miracle working hand of God move every single time. He has blown our mind. And what I came to understand is that faith is very much like a muscle. It's something that you have to grow. You have to train and and for most people your faith many times can seem so small but the more you stretch and the more you grow and the more you use your faith uh it becomes much more powerful and then you find yourself able to use it um for even larger situations and circumstances so i think that this is a fabulous opportunity for believers globally to really use their faith for everything in your life and to trust God. He is so faithful. In, and in, especially in times where things are a little bit uncertain, this is the perfect opportunity to see the faithfulness of our God. Thank I, you, first of all, Luann, for having me on the show. I'm really excited about being here with such powerhouse uh, women of faith and, and also the warriors that uh, God's called. My journey started, uh, he called me into ministry about uh, in 2000, actually. And for 10 years, I just went through the training process of being stretched and I did a lot of things in the wrong way and that was good. But then I finally stepped in full time into ministry um, in 2010 through a lot of circumstances. And he just simply said, get out of the boat, let's mm -hmm. go on an adventure. And it was um, really a testing of my faith because I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had, I had a good business, I was doing fine, but I knew that he had called me. So I got out of the boat and um, it was a little, unsteady at first but I, I knew that i had to trust him yeah. and he told me he said i'm going to make a, a little deal with you if you listen you know how god can speak to us differently but he said if you'll take care of my business i'll take care of yours nice. and i went okay well let's do this and i remember being the first place he put me was a little retreat ministry that was really falling apart now i had all as a handyman i had all the uh, abilities to do a lot of stuff you know the yard work and fix little things here and there and mm -hmm. you know i'd cook and everything else but I just was really stretched when it came to the finances because I'd always been independent and taking care of <clears throat> business the way it was supposed to be taken care of. Anyway, um, one day I just really had nothing else. I was trying to sell everything I had to pay my little bills that I did have. And um, I always say that I was, I, I got out of the boat, but I was still holding on to the side. Yeah. And yeah. He, um, he really showed up one day when I was, I had no, nothing left to pay my phone bill. And I just reminded him, I said, Lord, I said, you know, um, I'm all over this and I'm, I'm grateful um, for this opportunity, but I just wanted to remind you of our conversation. And that was that, um, you know, you said that if I take care of your business, you'll take care of mine. And just, if you need me for anything, I, I mean, there's a hundred dollar phone bill due here, but you know, if you need me, you let me know. I'll be over here, cut, you know, we need to go cutting grass. Right. Well, about a couple hours later, um, a car pulls in and it was a couple who had been staying down the road at the little B&B. &B, and uh, he said, you know, this place is beautiful, you know, we just keep driving by and tell me about it. So I told the story of how it started and, and the ladies that started it. And we just shared information. And um, I said, let me get you one of their books. And he's oh, let me get you one of mine too. I still have no idea who that was. He might, might see this, remember it. But he walked over and he shook my hand. And uh, he said, look, if we're back in this area, we'd love to stop and say, hey, again. I said, absolutely, anytime. And as they drew, drove off, I looked down in my hand and there was a hundred dollar bill. Aww. And I knew at that moment that God was, serious and yeah. it's time for me to get serious too and wow. i trusted him from that moment on Thank and that you. has been our agreement i always just take care of his business and he takes care of mine that's a great um, agreement and it's but at the same time it can be difficult because sometimes the finances can get a little little crazy yeah. and he'll say excuse me that's my part don't touch it yeah. so when it comes to <clears throat> ministry of being able to just trust him yeah. trust him on those days when you have no idea what's going to happen just like madrika was saying mm -hmm. you know you just didn't know what was going to happen from day to day. God's faithful. That's the biggest 
the biggest lesson I've learned through all of it, and it's, it's my saying, is that God is faithful, and he will take care of our business. He says in his word very clearly, um, he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. When we're called into ministry, we have to trust that. As a discipleship pastor, that's something I'm constantly teaching to, uh, to the people that I get an opportunity to share with. I said, look, if he's called you to this, he's going to supply everything you need, and that includes the finances. And he's going to show you how to do it. Some people he calls into it to actually be financers of the kingdom. Right. So it just we have to simply respond to him and just see what it is he really wants from us. And he's going to take us all on different paths. But I'm just so blessed um, to be able to share my testimonies, one after the other, of how he has just shown up and shown off is what I like to say. Uh, he's just been super faithful. So. I just, I do this his way and mm -hmm. just trust him with the outcome. And one of the things that we're doing on this show is basically sharing our stories, sharing the modeling. We're modeling for others how to do this whole faith walk. If God gives us something to do and as we step out and are faithful and we do our part, then he is faithful with his. I love that agreement that you have with God. That is a cool, cool thing. And um, so Libby, why don't you share a little bit about your story? You've got a lot to share also. Well, thank you, Luann. I'm really excited to be here too. You know, the thing about faith is it is the language of heaven. It wakes heaven up and heaven responds. But you know, there's a couple of different types of faith. There's abiding faith. And there's enduring faith. And, you know, sometimes you can be in a valley and you can say, I'm declaring everything. I'm still waiting. The Lord is developing and building your capacity and your character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but the real thing about faith is that we need to know our God. And because we know he is faithful, mm -hmm. then we can have faith right. because he's the one that we can trust. You know, Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. And so my sharing really is, I, I want to copy what Jesus does. Mm -hmm. You know, what a Je Jesus was really impressed with great faith. So it's always been my desire to have great faith. And, but that's knowing my authority. You know, you know I've, had, I've had a pretty rough road at times. I was a multimillionaire. I did a multi-million dollar subdivision. Mm -hmm. I had a massive dream. I wanted to set up a, a Christian healing center, a, a, a retreat where people could come if they had cancer and be ministered to and looked after physically, mentally, emotionally. And during the 2008 um, crash, I lost everything almost pretty much overnight. My $10 million subdivision just bang, it was now worth $3 million. And so I lost everything because I had, I had money borrowed. And so, but what I did in the transition, I, I still had some property around me that was legally still under my authority and I had no mm. cash. And so I decided to go to this little cottage one day and I said, now listen here, cottage, because <laughs> I figured you're still under my authority, even yeah. though I haven't completely lost you yet. Yeah. Yeah. And so I command you in the name of Jesus to do your job. You're mm -hmm. under my authority. You bring some cash into me. Mm -hmm. That's what you're under my authority for. Yes. Well, I'm not lying. Within 20 minutes, a man, well, I then took a little sign and put it outside the road to say cottage for rent. Within 20 minutes, mm -hmm. I had a man walk down my driveway and he came into my home, told me he wanted to rent my cottage and he laid out in front of me a thousand dollars worth of cash. Nice. Like serious. I that love was the me. Even though I was in the valley and I was losing everything, I knew my authority. So know your God, know your authority. And even if it feels wonky, you know, the Lord really gave me that um, concept of what it's like as a parent when you watch your child learn to ride a bike for the first time. You know that they are going to be able to do it, but they're, they're not sure about it. Right. And they're like, oh, this is a bit wonky. So yeah. if you're struggling right now, now, especially during what's going on in the world, and you're going, I just haven't got it. Have faith. Be bold. Speak it out. Because when you speak faith, heaven responds. And do as your father says. Don't do as the world says. Right. What does the father say? The father says love. He says hope. He's not saying fear and hopelessness. Right. So if you see something, if you're experiencing something emotionally, speak the opposite. Stand up, whether you feel it or not, and declare it over you. So heaven has permission to actually respond. And angels in heavenly realms can respond to your words. Because the Lord, when he said, let there be light, he is faith. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it came into being. But if right. you speak stuff and you don't have that faith, so if you're struggling, just look at yourself. Say, I know how to ride a bike. I know what it was like. 
and it's practiced. And it really is based also in your relationship with God. So that's my little story about faith. I have so many more things to, to share, yeah. but to me, it's the language of heaven and it activates miracles. I, I love that. I love that you took authority over, over your property. And a lot of us as Christians, we don't know how to take authority. We don't know that we have authority. And I really appreciate that you shared that today. And the other thing I like about what you shared, the example of being on a bicycle and it's a little wonky. Yeah, the faith life is a little wonky at first because we're not sure of it. But as we continue to, to walk this faith life, then we get better and better and we take the training wheels off and then we can ride that bike. So thank you for sharing. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. Karen, Karen Staley, and uh, she's from Zimbabwe, but she lives in the UK right now. Karen, what say you about faith and finances? Um, thank you so much, Luann. It's such a privilege, such an honor to be here with you amazing women. So many gems. My faith is stirred right now. Um, what the Lord put it on my heart to share with your viewers today is, as many of you probably already know, there is a great wealth transfer that has already started happening. Uh, we were talking before we came on air that the camels are coming. Some of you out there are really getting geared up to receive crazy wealth, wealth that you have not even dreamt of receiving, but it is his wealth. It's his money, they're his resources for his purposes. So with that in mind, the Lord wanted me to share with you something from my personal experience. Uh, I'm self-employed and have been for most of my adult life. So I guess I've always been doing different things and relying on the Lord and sometimes my own ideas to bring in the money. And I was going through a dry season, as I had done many times before. And I think I just didn't have the patience for the dry season at that time. It was stressing me out. I had bills to pay and I didn't have the money. And as it turns out, I didn't have the faith either to really believe that God was going to meet me in that place of need, even though I didn't really know I didn't have the faith. Uh, I would go to bed thinking about how I was going to pay the bills. I'd wake up in the morning thinking about how am I going to pay these bills? And what I noticed in retrospect was that because I had this grave concern about lack of money, I wasn't progressing in any area of my life. You know, the ideas had stopped flowing. My writing had stopped. I pretty much was numb to do the work that God had called me to do. Mm. One morning I woke up and again, the first thought of my, my mind was, oh, I need to pay those bills. What am I going to do? Where's the money coming from? Not again. I can't believe I've allowed this to happen. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say to me, you cannot worship God and mammon. You know, those moments mm. where you think the Holy Spirit either got the wrong person or you heard wrong. <laughs> like maybe it's the next house you're trying to speak to, right. Lord. But no, he was speaking to me. Right. And one of the things that I, I thought was surely to worship mammon, you've got to have money, treasures, riches. That's what mammon means. Uh, worldly treasures and possessions mm. I didn't really have. So I didn't think it applied to me. Mm. But the Lord showed me that because my trust and my security was placed in having money, mm. I was worshiping money. I was putting money at a place that I should have had God because he's my fortress. He's my refuge. He's my strong tower. Mm -hmm. He's the place that I'm supposed to put my security in. Mm -hmm. And what good am I going to be to the Lord if when I lack certain physical things, my faith diminishes? I apparently am not walking by faith. I'm, I am apparently not walking by faith, but rather I'm walking by sight. Uh, so that was a really grave lesson for me, and I'm glad I received it uh, because then it allowed me to be delivered of, of that expectation. Mm -hmm. Mammon being worldly places value on things that the Lord does not place value on. So these worldly possessions, it says in the scriptures in Matthew, you know, it talks about not laying up for ourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust can corrupt or where it can be stolen, but rather we lay up treasure in heaven. Uh, that is where our focus should be. Now, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be good stewards of wealth. We want wealth. We want to be able to do the work of the Lord, and we, we need money for ministry. We need it to be able to, to do his work in the earth. But for those of you, in fact, for all of us, but especially those of you getting ready to receive some of this wealth transfer, check your hearts and really put yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, am I in danger of falling into gluttony? greed, you know, mm. these things that are connected to mammon later on down the line, even if I don't know it now, it, it's definitely something worth checking. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I really like that you brought up the whole thing about not serving. You have to choose. You can't serve God and mammon. And when we're worrying, we're not serving God. We're not trusting in God. As we're worrying that he's not going to pay our bills or provide a car or a housing or whatever it is, that's not trusting in him. And we don't realize that that's what we're doing. And I think that as we realize when we put our trust in the Lord, that's trusting him. That's who we are serving. We're thanking him for what it is that we're praying for, and we're expecting that he's going to show up and he's going to deliver what we have asked. Because when we're workers together with God, he takes care of us. As Tina just shared, you know, we are, we have a deal with him. He's never left. It's us who chooses to, le to leave. And with that, with that trust in him, that gives us the hope that we need to keep moving forward. We have that hope. We have, we're, well, God's going to take care of that. It might not be here right here right now, but we're going to trust that he's going to provide whatever that is next. And that magnifies our hope. Hope is so important. And I don't think that a lot of people understand that as we put our trust in God and not mammon, whether it's worry or money or a house or whatever it is, as we put our trust in God and thank him for the things that he is about to deliver to us, we are building our faith. And that's, that gives us hope to keep moving forward. Right. Do you guys agree? What do you yeah, say? Absolutely. You Amen. know, just as you said that, Luann, I just got this whole thing about, you know, you can be in that place where you're not kind of seeing it, but, you know, God's given us a wonderful example of faith. You know, Jesus suffered for the joy that lay ahead. Now, what's that about? That's about faith. And, you know, Isaiah says the increase of the government, has, his government has no end. Mm -hmm. So if we look at things from a heavenly perspective, there's no end to the increase right. of his government. And how does he do it? Mm -hmm. He does it through the zeal of God, the joy of God. And you know what the joy of God is? It's intimacy with us. It's us being in his family. It's, it's his heavenly kingdom plans. And, you know, the Lord said to me in 2019, there was a great disaster coming. And I, I can share this later in another program. But one of the things he said at the end to me was, are you ready? And I had to think, am I ready for what? You know, is my, and it took me two years to work it out. But really, am I ready to listen to God's story about mm -hmm. faith? Am I ready to have a That's kingdom right. perspective? Or am I distracted by the world? And I think that really is, is the key point. If we look at the joy ahead, we look at the government that has no end, and God is just full of joy because of his family and the plans he has for us. And so I invite everyone, if you're distracted, to shift your perspective, to look at what the Father is showing us. And to, to walk that faith walk. Because that's that, that parallel we're in. We're in two worlds right now, aren't we? Right. We've got yeah. heaven and we've got what's going on in the world. And it's faith that will transition us. I think what you said, Libby, was so powerful mm -hmm. about perspective. Because there is a battle going on in the world right now for our eyes, for our ears. The world is trying to get us to think like they think. They mm -hmm. want us to think defeat. They want us to think lack. They want us to feel like we've been abandoned and like there's no hope. But it's so important at this time that we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We've got to feed ourselves on the word of God because in the word, everything, every single thing that we need for nourishment is there. We have to maintain that we are sons and daughters of the most high God. We're not orphans. We have a very real father who's already provided for all of our needs. And when we can remember that, in spite of everything that's going on around us, when it feels like the whole world is going crazy, we there is where we can find our hope. And that that right there is like an anchor and it will keep you, it will keep you from depression. It will keep you from quitting. It will keep you from saying no when God is saying, telling you to say yes to something. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to keep our perspective uh, on the word of God, understand and declare and remind yourself daily if you have to, that you have the mind of Christ, 
develop a God mentality, a God mentality that says that nothing is impossible and that that tells you that you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Amen. Awesome. When we do we that, have... we become unstoppable, unbreakable, unshakable, and unmovable. That's unstoppable faith. <laughs> Absolutely true. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Thank you, Madrika. Karen and uh, Tina, we have a few minutes left, a couple minutes. What, but what can you guys share with us? Last tidbits. What are your thoughts here? Um, I think we've touched on something very valuable here. We've started talking about hope. We yes. know the scripture in 1 Corinthians that says faith, hope, and love, these three remain, and the greatest of these is love. So I just want to look a little bit at the difference between faith and hope, uh, because many of us as believers, you know, faith is a free gift from the Lord. It lives in our spirit. It's irrevocable like all his other gifts. He doesn't remove that from us. The enemy can't touch it. Mm -hmm. So we we may have faith, which often faith is a today thing. Faith now is. It's for now. But hope, however, speaks to the future. Hope mm -hmm. speaks to your planning and your dreaming with God. Joseph mm -hmm. had dreams. Daniel had dreams. Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. Mm -hmm. But in order to be able to have any kind of faith for your dreams to come true for God, God's plans for you to happen, there needs to be a measure of hope. Mm -hmm. Now, where does hope live? Hope lives in your soul. Your soul is where your mind, your will, and your emotions are housed. So the experiences that you've had, your bad experiences, any trauma, uh, where you may have felt pain, where you keep regret, where you keep abandonment, rejection, disappointment, and all of those things, they feed on your hope. So we really need to ensure that we come before the Lord and we allow him in his presence by his anointing to deliver us of all of those things that are hope stealers because we need our hope to dream with God. Awesome, awesome. And Tina, what what are you thinking? What are you thinking right now? What's going on? Well, you know, and again, for what I do as a discipleship pastor, it's about getting people to realize who they are in Christ and that, you know, we each have this incredible call and everybody's call is different and, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, that's what makes us all unique. And we have to have the hope. We have to have the love for him. Uh, and, and, of course, the faith is the foundation to just, it's already there, work on it and, and keep moving forward. And I have seen so many beautiful things happen when people will walk in the very um, call that God has for them and, and to the point where they're just absolutely amazed. I know I, I'm constantly amazed at what he's doing in my life. It, it just is never ending. And so it really is a matter of taking what he has given us, trusting him with the outcome, and just keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, he told me one time, he said, um, I just felt like I was being so stretched in an area. And he said, the more I can stretch you, the more I can use you. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. This has been an amazing show. And for all of our viewers, all of these ladies have a free gift for you. So if you go to their website, you can download a free gift from them. Or you can go to thekingdomview.com. And on my website, you will see a page for all of the people who have come to my show and you'll have uh, access to each one of their websites and you can go there and download their free gift. Thanks again for joining us today on The Kingdom View. We'll see you next time.